I'm a mistake. I don't fit into this life. I feel like a stranger in this world, a visitor. I'm not in it, I'm looking at it. It's like I'm playing in a movie and I'm both spectator and actor. I'm sitting in the front row of the movie of my life. I don't understand, Laura. You used to be so gentle, so cute. Where's my little girl? I know we had some problems, but I always had the feeling we could talk about it. I never suspected you were struggling with these deep and hidden feelings. It's so easy to fool my mother. She believes everything I tell her. But she doesn't know the real me. She still considers me as a child. She doesn't understand me. She's too busy with her own life. Sometimes I fantasize that I'm adopted. That all this is a big mistake. And that soon my real parents will come and take me to my real home. It's a mix of different reasons. My husband and I divorced when Laura was 12. For several months, the whole family was in shock. My husband left us, and he didn't seem to care for us anymore. Little or no attention for the children and me. Her brother was also affected, but he's older and Laura's more sensitive. The problem started when you turned 14, didn't they, Laura? Laura, at first I thought it was a phase you were going through. All kids have an identity crisis when they enter puberty, that's normal. You needed attention. I know you were bullied at school. You were always a bit ahead of your age, so other children were jealous of you. You started to skip school and you lied about it. That was something you had never done before. November last year, I met Dimi. He understood me. He was so kind. He said that he knew what I was going to. He wrote poems for me and he mailed me some music. There was this one song that seemed to be written specially for me. Alienation by migraine. I played it a million times. Laura started talking less and less, not only to me, but also to her brother. In the evening at the table, she would eat rapidly and then go straight to her room. It was only later I realized that she was chatting the whole time. After a while, we met each other in the mall. Dimi is a little bit older than me, but we were made for each other. I learned a lot from him. He tells me things about life, things you can't learn in school, things my mother or father never told me. You know, about people and what they want in life and how I have to figure out what I want in life and what I have to do to get it. I feel so safe with him and I love him. <laughs> How can I not love Dimi? And he loves me. We talk about how people don't understand us. Our parents, the school. Maybe, maybe it's better if we leave. It will be better for everybody, not just us. My mother, she would be relieved. She'll have less to worry about. Dimi already went away once. He knows what to do. We need um, clothes and, uh, and money. He says we go and see the world. We'll go to a nice country, where somewhere where everything is easy, where it's warmer and where food is cheaper. A beautiful place where, where you see more stars 
than you ever did in your whole life. And where we can sleep together. Because over there it's legal, he says. Once you're 13, nobody can stop you there. I get a phone call from school. Laura attended class in the morning, but after lunch break, she didn't return. She has skipped school before, so I wait a few hours. Round six, I start to worry. I call some of her friends and classmates. One of them says that the last few months, she talked a lot about a certain Dimitri, uh, Dimi, but nobody has ever seen him. This is the first time I hear the name Dimitri, but my motherly instinct immediately tells me he must be somebody important. As a parent, you feel these things. It's very intense. The whole morning, I was so nervous. At a certain moment, I wanted to stop the whole thing. I would explode. But he reassured me. He said, we can't go back on it now. Hold on. We leave during lunch break at 12. That will give us a head start. We'll meet at the railway station. It'll take a few hours before they realize that we're gone. I have the visa card of my father, and I know the code. We'll change trains to avoid being discovered. And the next week is a holiday. It's less suspicious to travel during a holiday Laura, help. Voicemail. Laura, oh. Laura, what's going on? Where are you? Could you call me, please, honey? I'm not angry, I'm just worried. Please, please come home. By nine o'clock in the evening, I start realizing something is terribly wrong. I phoned the whole family. No one has seen her. I call my sister, she comes over and keeps my son company. And a friend of mine and I drive around in my car, all the way from home and then back to school and back three times, looking for Laura. No clues, no trace, nothing. I call the police. But madam, it's Valentine's weekend. They're off to celebrate Valentine. Don't worry too much. They'll come back after a short while. And anyway, we'll have to wait 24 hours before we can take your statement. But my daughter didn't say anything. That's not her habit. And I don't know this Dimitri. Look, she's, she's only 14. Well, it's not illegal for a 14-year-old to travel. And unless we know more about this Dimitri, there's not a lot we can do. Go to sleep. I'm sure you'll, you'll have some news soon. This happens a lot. If they're not back by tomorrow morning, go to your local police station. They'll know what to do. And uh, bring a clear photo of Laura and all the information you have on her. I'm sorry. Good evening, madam. This is the worst night of my life. Is she okay? What happened? Is she angry for something I did? Where will she sleep? Will she eat properly? And why doesn't she answer her phone? And who is this Dimitri? How old is he? Are they sleeping together? I'm so, so angry with her. I'm frightened. I feel betrayed and let down and excluded by my own daughter. I feel helpless. I'm worried sick. And then my friends and family ask me what I did to chase her away like that. Oh, now I feel guilty. But I can't say what for. 
We take a local train to cross the border. Nobody notices us. We don't look suspicious. It's Valentine. That first night, we take a room in a cheap motel. There are no personal, no questions asked. Mrs. Hendricks, yesterday evening I called the police about my daughter. Was it you I spoke to? No, I'm sorry, madam. That's the police call center for emergencies at night. We are your local police department and we're here for emergencies during daytime. Even we have to sleep sometimes. Now, what's the problem? I've come to report the fact that my daughter, Laura Hammers, is missing for 24 hours now. I have her picture with me. And my son was able to find some information on MSN about this boy. Yes, this right. Uh, one moment, madam. John! John! Are you busy right now? Yeah, yeah, okay. No, no. Peter, Peter, can you come here and take a statement and file a report on a missing person? Yeah. Yes, I know. Yes, all right. I'll see what I can do. Uh, please take a seat, madam. This could take a while. Those first days were very stressful. Everything was so extremely intense. We were afraid to be caught, so we had to be very careful, constantly watching our bags. Every time we saw a policeman, we flipped. It was paranoia, but we felt alive. Dimi and I felt closer than ever. <laughs> we were partners in crime now. A bit like Romeo and Juliet, or Bonnie and Clyde. Hello, this is the Youth Brigade, Agent de Box speaking. How can I help you? Hello, officer. I'm calling to inform about my 14-year-old missing daughter, Laura. Laura Hammers. I gave a statement Saturday afternoon at the local police station, but I haven't heard any news since then. Hammers? Laura Hammers, you say? Yes, Laura Hammers, yes. I'm afraid we don't have a file in her name. What do you mean? She's 14 and missing since Friday, and you don't even have a file? Well, I'll check what happened, and I will call you back on this number as soon as possible, madam. I've taken some money from home, and Dimi uses his visa. We rent rooms in hotels. Most of the time, the staff doesn't ask questions. Now and then, I get messages from my mother. But I raise him quickly. Not here, not now. Home seems so far away now. And there are so many exciting things happening. Is this even the same planet? I don't have to deal with all the usual shit. No more nagging at home. No more teachers telling me what to do. No more idiots at school. Hello, uh, Mrs. Hendricks? Well, my apologies. Uh, because this weekend was a special weekend, a holiday weekend, there was a special schedule at your local police department. And apparently your file was left on a desk at your local police station. But this is outrageous. How is that possible? My daughter is missing for three days now and...